making peace with the past of powerful Dr. Phil. Next, Oprah. Next on Channel 7, join us for the latest national and international news on World News Now, which is already in progress. And here are the, some of the stories we're covering this morning at ABC News. In a speech to the Japanese parliament, President Bush vowed to use American power to protect U.S. allies in the region. The president also praised Japan for helping to fight terrorism. Protests broke out in Seoul, South Korea, the second stop on Mr. Bush's Asian trip. The demonstrators were angered by the president's description of North Korea as part of an axis of evil. And today is the 60th anniversary of a painful chapter for Japanese Americans. President Roosevelt signed an executive order forcing 120,000 of them to give up their homes and businesses and live in internment camps during World War II. Those are some of the stories we're following at ABC. The United Nations estimates there are 12 million refugees on the move around the world. They're fleeing famine and war, looking for a place to resettle. And one of the most welcoming places for refu refugees happens to be in the state of Vermont. But like the rest of the country, it has become a little less welcoming since September 11th. Still, Vermont is a place where refugees from all over the world have been thriving for years. ABC's Dave Marish visited the state to report for last night's Nightline. Vermont, a small state, not diverse, the population as white as the winter landscape, seems an odd choice to welcome refugees from Africa and Southeast Asia and fractured Yugoslavia. But Vermont has been devoted from its very beginnings to the three things that refugees want, freedom, unity, and equality of opportunity. In the Vermont Constitution, adopted in 1777, slavery was abolished. The right to vote was given to all voters and not just to those who owned land. So two major differences from any of the other constitutions adopted in, in that particular era. I'm a Bosnian who lost her home. I'm a Bosnian who lost her country. I'm a Bosnian whose friends and family were killed just because I'm a Muslim. I'm a Bosnian, but I'm alive. This is who I am. Tough and independent, these new Vermonters, enrolled in Tom Smith's English as a Second Language course um, at the Community College of Vermont. I'm Bosnian, struggling through life, defending what is mine. To left your homeland, and I didn't have time to take nothing with me beside my children. But after that, I was lucky when I camped here. I found good people here. But when you come to Boman, if you stand just only from your apartment, you shake hand with somebody, you know there's a good smile, showing that you are in the good hand and you have a good security. If you ask something, even a ride, I need a ride, just where you can show me this post office. Where's the bank? Any kind of thing, you'll get the help. So perhaps it should not be such a surprise that Vermont's largest city, Burlington, has become a major haven for refugees from all around the world. I think in Burlington is a very nice place to live. It's a no trouble, no fighting, other kind of stuff. <laughs> The community that got Vermont started as a new home for refugees came from Southeast Asia. By the time Andy Tai arrived in 1991, Burlington already had dozens of Vietnamese. Today, State Representative George Cross, who used to be the school superintendent in Winooski, says... And we're now into the second generation uh, in Winooski of, of Vietnamese uh, in our schools. Some of the older folks that came in the early and in, in mid 1980s and, and they now have children in the school districts. My brother has been uh, finished high school on last year. I think this Burlington is good for 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 go to school and that kind of stuff too. As the children of the Vietnamese refugees of the 80s enter Burlington's public schools, they mingle with the children of the refugees of the 90s, the Bosnians. 
So far, we're told, so good. Vermont is good for refugees. And as you'll see, they are good for Vermont, too. Vermont in general is very rural, and it doesn't really have the allure for a lot of young people. Filling that hole in the hiring pool are refugees. We felt that we needed a, an edge in terms of trying to get stable employees. We were able to tap into the, the, the Bosnian community. Having done so, and the list of Bosnian names along his employees' coat rack tells you plenty, Tony Health found he had great employees, many of whom needed help to speak and understand good English. I saw, what tense is that? I saw. Passed, passed. okay. And the state of Vermont the underwrites class. these classes yes. and offers so English I as a second language in I elementary and high schools, colleges, churches, and workplaces. And, and it's amazing to just see that the, the leap that they've been able to make using it, so it's, it's great. In Vermont, the process that built America is alive and well. Opportunities keep appearing, refugees keep grabbing them, and the result is one success after another. The White House says it is determined that September 11th will have only a passing effect on this. The situation where I was before, Physically, I can say it, I forgot it, but emotionally, I did not forget it because I have my friend or my relatives or my body behind, still yelling and still crying to me. And that was Dave Marish reporting for last night's Nightline. You are watching World News Now. More news coming up from ABC. There is a rhythm to life. We sleep at night and wake in the morning. It's this sleep cycle that helps keep us in a healthy balance. But for millions of Americans, sleep doesn't always come easy. Fortunately, there's Ambien. Ambien is a prescription sleep aid that can help you get a full night's sleep. With Ambien, you fall asleep fast, stay asleep longer, and generally wake without feeling groggy the next morning. No wonder Ambien is the number one prescribed sleep aid in America. Until you know how Ambien will affect you, you shouldn't drive or operate machinery. Side effects may include drowsiness, dizziness, and diarrhea. You shouldn't take it with alcohol. Patients who abuse prescription sleep aids may become dependent. Prescription sleep aids are most often taken for seven to 10 days as needed. Your doctor will advise you about taking them longer. Take Ambien only when you can devote a full night to sleep and wake up rested and ready to start your day. Talk to your doctor about Ambien. Ambien works like a dream. Do you need to learn how to operate a computer? Hi, I'm John Scherer, CEO and founder of Video Professor. Seems like everywhere I go these days, somebody's recognizing me as the Video Professor. Well, that's because we've been teaching people how to run computers for over 14 years now. You know, our product is quick, and it's easy to learn with, and you can try it for free. You know, over the years, millions of people have learned how to operate the computer using our product. We get happy letters every day from people thanking us. Violet from Alabama writes, your lesson make using the program seem so simple that even I can use it. Janet from California writes, your tutorials have opened up the world of computers to me at last. But the most rewarding thing for me is having people stop me on the street and telling me how easy it was to learn with our product. They had tried expensive classes, they tried big thick manuals, they couldn't get it. If you just want to learn how to run a computer once and for all, save yourself a lot of time and energy, try our product. Let me show you how simple this is. You put this CD in your CD tray, your lesson will come up. The lesson plays right on your computer. It works just like a VCR. You have a play button, pause, rewind, fast forward. Just follow the step-by-step -step instruction. You know, I'm so confident my product will work for you, I'm going to send it to you absolutely free. It's regularly a $59.95 value. You pay a small shipping and handling. The reason I'm going to do it is because I know that once you try our product, you'll come back to us for all your computer learning needs. And if this doesn't teach you how to run that computer, I'll even refund your shipping and handling. So what do you got to lose? Try my product.
Call Video Professor now for your free lesson. Choose from Windows, Word, Quicken, the Internet, and many more. Call in the next 10 minutes, and this free gift will be yours. The Anytime Organizer is the calendar, diary, address book, and journal on your PC, so you'll never miss an appointment again. Remember, you must call now to get your free CD and the extra free gift. So don't delay. Call now. Call 1-800-309-1376. Well, British Marines invaded Spain over the weekend, but the invasion only lasted about five minutes. It seems the Royal Marines were just a tad off course during an amphibious exercise Sunday, so the troops armed with mortar launchers and assault rifles ended up storming ashore in Spain instead of the British territory of Gibraltar. They left after local fishermen and police told them they were in Spain. The British military apologized for the invasion yesterday, but now we will make our way across the Atlantic to London to check in with Julia Caesar of the BBC, who I'm sure is not invading anyone. How are you doing, Julia? <laughs> I'm good, yeah. Obviously, they just used the wrong A to Z, and somewhere along the line, they just took a wrong turn in. It's been done before, who can say? <laughs> Uh, the markets have not been particularly good yesterday here. Very, very quiet day. But then, of course, uh, you had your President's Day yesterday, so all the U.S. markets were closed. Uh, trading here in London was down some 25% on a normal trading day. It was the quietest day so far this year. So really not particularly good. However, today we've had some news out from Invensys, which is an engineering firm here. Uh, they've also said that they're going to try and cut their debt, uh, which stands at some £3 billion uh, pounds by actually selling off two of their units. So that's going to cause a lot of interest around that engineering sector. Mm. Some good news out there for folk who like beer and lots of it. Well, I don't know. This is quite a bizarre story. Uh, this company, Carlsberg Tetley, you may have heard of them, have spent some £28 million on research to find how they can improve the length of time it, it takes to actually pour a pint of beer. And apparently they've reduced it by 14 seconds. So we can all breathe a sigh of relief there, eh? Yeah, I guess that means they have to work with the phone. But anyway, what about dieters? Speaking of light beer... <laughs> Yes, a very light beer on this one. Um, you're not so big on curry eating over there, but certainly here in the UK, we're very big curry eaters. And uh, now it's come out that there's a new diet, which means that people have to eat curry the whole time and they lose a lot of weight. That's mm. according to this fitness instructor who took the plan. I'm not sure you'd have many friends if you ate curry that all the time. That would be my but thought, mm. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Now, we all know people who are grumpy, but apparently, according to one psychologist, they've got a good reason for it. Yeah, this is something you will know nothing about, Derek. Being oh, grumpy no. specifically in the morning? Oh, no, we don't know anything about that. Uh, but apparently, a scientist has come out saying, it's down to your brain. You were just born that way. You just got a grumpy brain. Bye-bye, Julia. You're looking at the first major breakthrough in bed design in over 70 years. It's the amazing Tempur-Pedic Swedish Sleep System. Tempur-Pedic molds to every curve of your body. Unlike hard metal springs that press against you, Tempur-Pedic absorbs your weight. The famous Tempur material, initially developed by NASA to cushion astronauts from immense g-forces, was transformed by a famous Swedish scientist into the ultimate sleep surface. The miracle is literally on the inside where billions of memory cells conform to every curve of your body. Compared to other metal springs, Tempur-Pedic reduces painful pressure points and keeps your spine in perfect alignment. Look how Tempur-Pedic cushions the impact of an egg thrown at a high speed by this baseball pitcher. The egg breaks with an old-fashioned metal spring mattress, and Tempur-Pedic is built to last and won't break down, even after 26,000 pounds of punishment. Don't try this with your existing bed. Look at how Tempur-Pedic's material does not transfer motion. It's like having two beds in one. I would not give that bed up for anything. I'm serious. I crawl into bed and I, I'm so happy that I'm getting into something that's so relaxing. Call the number on your screen and I'll let you sleep on a Tempur-Pedic bed for one third of a year. That's a full four months. Your good credit is good enough for me. No down payment, no money out of your pocket. You pay me nothing. We'll even come to your house and set it up. 
So pick up the phone and get the good night's sleep that you deserve. And as part of the special television offer, we'll give you this Tempur-Pedic pillow, a $120 value, free for just trying the bed. There's nothing that compares to the Tempur-Pedic. It's just, there's nothing like it. You can keep it for 120 days, and after the 120 days, if you don't like it, you can return it. What do you have to lose? We have all the best of our road trips. Rosie on the road, next time. It's Tuesday morning, and the president guarantees Freedom. American power to protect Asian allies. From ABC News, this is World News Now. President Bush told the Japanese parliament a strong U.S. military presence will remain in Asia. Hello, from New York, I'm Derek McGinty. And good morning to you, I'm Liz Cho. Also this half hour, the question of sanity takes center stage in the Andrea Yates murder trial and the extraordinary career of a broadcast pioneer. We begin with the president. President Bush arrived in South Korea this morning for a two-day visit before he ends his Asian tour in China. Before leaving Tokyo, he spoke to Asia's oldest legislative body, stressing the U.S. commitment to campaign against terror. Mr. Bush also addressed Japan's slumping economy. ABC's Josh Gerstein has more on that. President Bush and the First Lady wrapped up their visit to Japan with a bow to tradition, meeting with the country's emperor and empress. Earlier in a speech to Japan's legislature, Mr. Bush took care not to lecture his hosts about their long-running economic problems. Instead, he discussed how the U.S. emerged from its economic slowdowns. We learned that in times of crisis and stagnation, it is better to move forward boldly with reform and restructuring than to wait, hoping that old practices will somehow work again. The president also sought to calm fears that the U.S.'s tough stance in the war on terrorism could prompt hostilities in Asia. We seek a peaceful region where no power or coalition of powers endangers the security or freedom of other nations, where military force is not used to resolve political disputes. In South Korea, President Bush's second stop, there is even greater nervousness about his tough talk. Mr. Bush will try to convince the Koreans that he can brand the regime in the North as evil and seek a dialogue with it at the same time. Josh Gerstein, ABC News, with the president in Tokyo. At least 139 bodies have been recovered at a crematorium in Noble, Georgia, but that number is expected to grow dramatically. Investigators continue to find remains stacked in vaults and in sheds at the facility. Federal teams are being called in to set up a mass morgue. The owner of the crema crematorium is back in jail, facing new theft by deception charges. A second day of testimony gets underway today in the murder trial of Andrea Yates. In their opening statements, lawyers on both sides debated whether her mental state was to blame for her taking the lives of her own children. ABC's Andrew Colton has details. Andrea Yates admits she killed her five children last summer, drowning them one by one in a bathtub in the family's suburban Houston home. But whether she was legally insane or not when she did it, may be the difference between whether she lives or dies. The 37-year-old woman watched as prosecutors said she knew what she was doing when she killed her kids. They ranged in age from seven years to six months. She is presumed to be safe, to know right from wrong. The state bears no burden of proof to prove that she was sane. But it's not that simple. For years before the murders, Andrea Yates was under treatment for postpartum depression. She was in a psychiatric hospital just weeks before the drownings. She was severely depressed. She was obviously suffering from psychosis. She was suffering from a delusion and beliefs that were, that were not based in reality. The trial is shaping up to be a blame game. While prosecutors blame Andrea, Andrea's attorneys may blame husband Russell Yates, saying he should have never left her alone with the children. And Russell may testify that doctors are to blame for mistreating his wife, for saying she was okay when she wasn't. The trial is expected to last two to three weeks. Set to testify next, some of the first police officers 
who arrived on the scene. Andrew Colton, ABC News, Houston. In Lima, Peru, the 20-year prison sentence of American Lori Berenson was upheld by the Peruvian Supreme Court. Berenson, who was convicted of collaborating with Marxist rebels, is now hoping for a pardon from Peru's president. And our parents say they'll ask for help from President Bush, who visits Peru next month. Well, there is some good employment news for a change about airlines. Southwest plans to hire about 4,000 workers this year. Southwest bucked the trend as U.S. carriers generally suffered big losses because of the recession and the September 11th aftermath. And United Airlines reached a tentative agreement with its mechanics averting a threatened strike tomorrow. Union leaders are recommending it to their members who rejected an earlier offer last week. Despite some widely publicized shark attacks last summer, it turns out that the number of such incidents was actually down. According to the University of Florida, there were 76 unprovoked shark attacks in the U.S. last year, compared to 85 in 2000, and most of the injuries were minor. Wow. I guess it's only uh, gone down if you weren't one of the people who was bitten. Right. When I was actually on my honeymoon a couple of years ago in Hawaii, there was a woman who was attacked um, in one of the beaches right next door. She actually went swimming um, during uh, twilight hours when there's one of the times they say you shouldn't. She was bit in the tushy, but she was okay. <laughs> Did you go out after that? Were you scared? No, we kind of stayed in the pool after afterwards. That, like, yeah, Can you blame us? <laughs> no, I cannot. <laughs> Let's check the weather forecast. Strong winds. No shark, though, but rain and snow around the west. Some violent thunderstorms in the Mississippi Valley. Several inches of snow around the Great Lakes. From the southern plains to the east coast, temperatures will be above normal. Seasonable just about everybody else, everywhere else. Here's the National Temperature Index, international forecasts, and whales in Australia. Mr. Morton is the subject of my sentence, and what the predicate says, he does. See, Mr. Morton is the subject of my sentence, and what the predicate says, he does. See, Mr. Morton is the subject of my sentence, and what the predicate says, he does. Mr. Morton walks, Mr. Morton talks, Mr. Morton reads, Mr. Morton loves. Mr. Morton walked down the street, yeah, Mr. Morton World News walks. Now Weather, and brought to you Morton by Slim Fast Foods. Cat. Yeah, Mr. Morton talks. What's up, cat? And Mr. Morton was a lonely man. Yeah, Mr. I love being a paramedic. I love helping people. But I'd get to the call, and I was too overweight. I'd feel like I had to use the oxygen for myself. It was like carrying a sandbag around my waist. I've tried other diets. The Slim Fast plan really works. The website lays it all out for you. It's easy. You can take it anywhere. It's right there. The shakes are really good for me. Slim Fast has the protein and carbs that I need. I feel more physically fit. The energy is a big help. I can do my job better. Knowing that I've helped somebody, it's the best feeling in the world. Slim Fast. It's your life. Feed it right. Attention U.S. veterans between the ages of 50 and 79. This message is for honorably discharged United States veterans from all branches of service, including the reserves. Message also applies to spouses and widows. You are eligible to apply for term life insurance benefits under a veterans-only program now available in most states from Veterans Life Insurance Company. Stay tuned for details. Many veterans and their families have received this notice advising them of eligibility for benefits. If you did not receive one, you may not be aware you could qualify to apply for life insurance coverage from Veterans Life Insurance Company. If you're a U.S. veteran, age 50 to 79, or the spouse or widow of a veteran, you can still apply for $5,000 or $10,000 of supplemental life insurance exclusively at vets-only rates. Call this number now to request your no-cost, no-obligation benefit eligibility statement from Veterans Life with the rate for your age and steps you must take to apply. Call the number on your screen now. It's toll-free. You'll also receive a Veterans Burial Benefits Update that explains government benefits you're entitled to, what's covered, and the dollar amount under current laws. This life insurance benefit for veterans ages 50 to 79 is not automatic. Call now to request information. Veteran spouses and widows are also eligible to apply. Just call this toll-free number now. Veterans only. Call 1-800-640-0110 for your benefit eligibility statement, rate, and free veterans burial update. Call 1-800-640-0110. That's 1-800-640-0110. Call now. Honoring your past, securing your future. That's Veterans Life Insurance Company. Additional life insurance at vets only rates. Applications are being accepted now. For yours, just call this number. Information is free and there's no obligation.
The best way to relieve dry eyes, your own natural tears. They lubricate, protect, and hold in moisture. Visine tears do the same thing. They lubricate, protect, and hold in moisture. So how can your eyes tell the difference between their own natural tears and ours? They can't. So get Visine tears in and get the dry out naturally. Tonight, it's one of the most emotional hours of television you'll see all year. I'm sorry. When children are the victims. Does she touch you? Being a cop. He kept pushing me. Is the hardest job of all. Please, can I go home? New NYPD Blue at a special time, 10, 9 central. Tonight on ABC. Viewer discretion advised. Sunday, it's two super new episodes. At 9, 8 central, her secret identity is always on the edge of exposure. Did they see you? A new alias. At 10, 9 central, his secret identity is on the edge of sanity. I tried to fly without my cape. A new practice following a new alias starting at 9, 8 central this Sunday on ABC. World News Now Sports. Brought to you by Visine Tears. At the Olympics, there's a new women's freestyle gold medal winner, and she comes from Australia. Freestyle aerialist Alyssa Camplin nailed a pair of triple twisting, double backflip jumps to take home the gold. Camplin is a formal, former gymnast who used to train a leech infested lake near Melbourne. She joined speed skater Stephen Bradbury as the latest golden child from down under. For her. In other Olympic events, a big win for the U.S. hockey team and the International Skating Union is proposing major changes for the way the, score, the sport will be judged. Here's Stefan Tubbs with the latest from Salt Lake City. During day 11 of the Winter Olympics here in Salt Lake City, a big lopsided win for U.S. men's hockey and other skating controversy news. We'll start with that. The International Skating Union making dramatic, if not revolutionary, possible changes. The proposal is to throw out the current 6.0 scoring system that's been used throughout this sport's history and replace it with a program that makes the skaters earn points. They'll decide on this later on in June. And another thing, they've decided they would expand the current nine judges to 14. Then a computer system would use seven of those scores to give those final marks to the ice skaters. Again, the ISU will meet later on this year to determine whether or not that will become a reality. As for U.S. men's hockey at the Ice Center yesterday, a lopsided win over Belarus, 8-1. to one. Bill Guerin, John LeClaire, and Scott Young, each with two goals to lead the U.S. to victory. And uh, as far as any medals yesterday, no U.S medals for the U.S., but the count still at 18, which is five more than any previous U.S. Winter Olympics team. Later on today, freestyle men's aerials up at Deer Valley outside of Park City, the U.S. with four in the finals. And then later on tonight, the women's short program here in Salt Lake City at the Ice Center. Should be some good skating on hand here in Salt Lake. At the Winter Olympic Games, Staff and Tubbs, ABC News, Salt Lake City. All right, here's the latest look at the medal count. Germany has the top spot with 24 medals, eight of them gold, 10 silver, and six bronze. No medals for the U.S. yesterday. They remain in second place overall with a total of 18 medals, including four gold, seven silver, and seven bronze. Norway has eight gold medals and 14 overall. Austria has 13 medals, and Russia has 12. Turning to the NFL this morning, the Tampa Bay Bucks finally have a coach, and even though he wasn't exactly their first choice, John Gruden, who had one year left on his deal with Oakland, will take the over will take over coaching duties next season. Bill Parcells, Steve Mariucci, and Marvin Lewis were some of the other names the Bucks were looking at to replace the fired Tony Dungy. Very strange. They had to give up a lot to get him two first round draft choices, two second round draft choices to Oakland in exchange for their coach. A lot of folks say a little too much for a guy who just coaches. You're just happy not to talk about figure skating. It is an amazing thing, but I got a feeling that tomorrow when we're talking about, well. ABC's World News Now will continue after this from our ABC stations. Nobody covers news like ABC 7 Eyewitness News. We're in your neighborhood, on your street. We're your eyes, your ears. Your voice from the heart of the city. To communities all around. Long Island, Westchester, Connecticut, New Jersey. Nobody covers news like ABC7 Eyewitness News. Nobody. Get ready.
to gear up and get out in a legendary Jeep vehicle, the most award-winning brand of 4x4s. And only Jeep gets you there with protection, like a seven-year, 100,000-mile powertrain pledge on engines and transmissions, plus generous cash allowances of up to $2,500 or 0% financing on select vehicles. Great products, great protection, great values. That's the Jeep promise. Here are some of the stories we're covering this morning at ABC News. In Noble, Georgia, dozens more bodies are being found in vaults, sheds, and in the woods around a crematory. Officials say the final figure could be in the hundreds. The crematory's operator, Ray Marsh, was arrested a second time on new charges of theft by deception. President Bush and the First Lady called on Japan's Emperor and Empress as they wrapped up their visit to Tokyo. The president then flew to South Korea where there were protests over Bush's, Mr. Bush's description of North Korea as a part of an axis of evil. And the legendary voice of the Los Angeles Lakers announcer Chick Hearn is back in the hospital after breaking his hip. Hearn underwent open heart surgery last December and was expected to return to work March 1st. And those are some of the stories we're following at ABC. We have lost a pioneer in the news business. Word came yesterday that Howard K. Smith had died Friday. He was 87 years old. Smith began his career at UPI and then signed on at CBS Radio as one of Murrow's boys covering World War II. In 1961, he landed here at ABC and he stayed here until his retirement in 1978. Charles Gibson has a look back at Smith's remarkable career. Good evening. What's the picture tonight in California? This is Howard K. Smith. Good night from Chicago. For 50 years, if it was a major story, Howard covered it. ABC correspondent Clark says that three men were shot. Robert Kennedy was lying. He was seriously bleeding. Go back further still to the voice your parents, maybe your grandparents heard. Howard K. Smith was one of the fabled Murrow boys on CBS radio, reporting from Berlin at the beginning of World War II. This is Berlin. Adolf Hitler's speech in Munich is still the biggest news here this evening. The announcement that Hitler had spoken came suddenly, but to correspondents here, it was not unexpected. The rumor has been current all day, and correspondents missed their dinner waiting for the rumor to materialize. However, some of what, of what is known of Hitler's words seems directed clearly to the address of America. <clears throat> For one thing, he said German ships reserve the right to shoot on any warships in self-defense. For another, he said American war production has caused no fear in Germany. German arms, he stated, have multiplied since the beginning of this war. Howard was the last reporter to escape Berlin before America joined the war. And at that time, I was forbidden to broadcast and uh, finally told to leave the country. And I left <clears throat> on the 7th of December. And the 7th of December, I crossed into Switzerland. And the Swiss guard looked at my American passport and said, do you know Pearl Harbor was bombed today? And I said, where's Pearl Harbor? And I haven't asked a second time. And returned to Berlin when the war was over. This is Howard K. Smith reporting for the Combined American Networks. Three and a half years ago, I left Berlin by impolite request of the Nazi government. I thought it was a pretty crummy city that I gladly bade farewell to then. Yesterday, I went back. I went back to report on the Nazi capitulation to the Red Army and to us in the headquarters of Marshal Zhukov. But however great and important that historic event was, the thing that left me and all the other correspondents speechless before we ever reached the Marshal's headquarters was the site of Berlin. It's still hard to make myself believe that it wasn't some dream. The city I knew is gone, rubbed out. It's the most massive work of concentrated destruction in history. And then there was the nightmare of concentration camps. Howard was there. The Ninth Army opened several of those camps, and we saw horrors we never dreamt were so. All a part of a correspondent's journey through the 20th century. He was the moderator of the first televised presidential debate. Good evening. The television and radio stations of the United States and their affiliated stations are proud to provide facilities for a discussion of issues in the current political campaign by the two major candidates for the presidency. The candidates need no introduction. The Republican candidate, Vice President Richard M. Nixon, and the Democratic candidate, Senator John F. Kennedy. 
A Louisiana native, he covered civil rights in the South in the 60s for CBS, then quit because the network cut a line from his broadcast in which he quoted Edmund Burke, saying all that is necessary for the triumph of evil is for good men to do nothing. I think uh, television contributed to the passage of the Civil Rights Act by simply portraying what was going on in Birmingham. We were the only people there then with our cameras, but we didn't know what was going to happen, so we didn't reveal our cameras until too late and it was over. But the next year, everybody's cameras were there, and we showed pictures of the police hosing uh, demonstrators. That was when he came to work at ABC. He anchored, he reported from Vietnam. In one touching television moment, he interviewed his son, Jack. My son was very nearly killed at the biggest battle of the war, and he survived. And it's a great pleasure indeed for me to see him. Good evening. I'm Howard K. Smith in Washington. He anchored with Harry Reasoner and later provided commentary here in an era when the networks had commentary. Why in 150 years has no British prime minister ever been fired on? Why in that same time have four American presidents been shot to death and four others shot at? I don't think that psychological explanations help very much. There are proportionately as many nuts in Britain as here. Murders, especially sexual ones, are a British specialty, though usually done with a knife or a blunt instrument. It has to be the American cult of the gun, the gun born of need and winning the lawless West and magnified into peculiarly American folk drama by all the media ever since. What easier way for a bad dramatist to tie all the loose ends of his plot together in the last minute than by a blast from the good guy's gun at high noon in the Old West or a cannonade from the police in the dark of present-day city nights? From overdoses of that kind of stuff, it's an easy step for an unstable mind to think she can solve all problems and win some fuzzy cause by a single blast at a president. He angered many, not just those in power, but sometimes those in his own profession. He once complained that some of the new breed covering the news lacked the depth of a saucer. But generations of journalists admired and revered Howard K. Smith. Attention, Americans without prescription drug coverage. Don't wait to find out if Medicare will ever cover all your prescriptions or if your employer will ever offer you coverage. Get the People's Prescription Plan today. Members have already saved over $180 million on prescription drugs, eyewear, hearing aids, and more at over 50,000 locations nationwide. Your household is covered for just $7.95 a month with no limits on use, so the savings can really add up. And as a special offer, when you call today, you pay just $2.95 for your first month, a savings of $5 off the regular price. Plus, your satisfaction is guaranteed or your money back. There are no claim forms or waiting periods. You save right on the spot. So don't wait for the politicians or your employer to decide if they're going to help you with prescription costs. Save now with the People's Prescription Plan. Call 1-800-915-0099 for free information on the People's Prescription Plan. 1-800-915-0099. Seasons Freshness, the freshness of the seasons and the antibacterial strength you trust from Mr. Clean. Now get the Wall Street Journal delivered for eight weeks at just 38 cents a day of 50% savings. Call 800-468-2200. That's 800-468-2200 for the Wall Street Journal. The best way to relieve dry eyes, your own natural tears. They lubricate, protect, and hold in moisture. Visine tears do the same thing. They lubricate, protect, and hold in moisture. So how can your eyes tell the difference between their own natural tears and ours? They can't. So get Visine tears in and get the dry out naturally. Tomorrow is today, time to change. Make it happen. Create it, take it, shape it. Your life.
belongs to you. Do it real, make it true. It's your life. It's your life. Feel it right. Slim Fast, smart, well balanced nutrition to help you eat well and manage your weight. It's your If you are one of the millions of Americans who want to get back into the rhythm of life, ask your doctor about Ambien or call toll-free 1-877-9-AMBIEN. Seal's new album due out sometime this summer. Oh, did uh, I know that? Time to look at the papers, find the headlines and stories that may be just a smidgen interesting, Liz. Start off with Olympic stuff, of course, of course. which I love. Yeah. This is um, Australia's gold medalist, Alyssa Camplin. Look at that. That is just awesome. Turning yourself upside down, twisting around in the air. You know, she won the second ever gold medal, or medal, I should say, for Australia in the Winter Olympics. And she's been only been doing this for four years. Wow. For four years. However, she has said that she has had nine concussions during wow. that time. That's more than Troy Aikman. That's a lot of concussions. That's a lot of concussions. Um, this is an interesting story out of the Minneapolis Star Tribune. You know, we've been reporting all morning about that uh, crematorium where the... Uh, uh, had, where the bodies are piling up, where they were never burned. Well, apparently they did a story about the fact that neighbors hadn't smelled any of the smoke or smells that usually go along with burning bodies in a long, long you time. You gotta feel so bad for those so families. So it's just, uh, you know, that was a telltale piece of evidence that nobody apparently reported for a while. Right, right. Yeah. Tonight, Olympic coverage again. Oh, good Lord. <laughs> Figure skating. Tonight is the ladies' short program. Michelle Kwan, um, Sarah Hughes, Sasha Cohen, or the Americans that are skating. It is a really, really, really tough competition this year because there's also Arena Slitskaya, who is also heavily favored to win as well. Wow. But, you know, we're really rooting my, for I'm those gonna, Americans. I'm going to put off my nap to watch that. Not! All right, let's take a look at the Milwaukee Journal. Now, you know, Governor T Tommy Thompson, the, now the Secretary of Health and Human Services, well, he used to be the governor of Milwaukee. Now, the Washington Post originally picked up on this story, but the Milwaukee Journal Sentinel has reported it. Uh, he was headed off to Illinois last Friday for a fundraising trip. He was going to Reagan National Airport. Mm -hmm. Well, he kind of broke into the line. You see, everybody else has been waiting 40 minutes he or cut? so. He cut the line Ooh, with the security I, detail. That's a no-no. did not take kindly. In fact, some angry uh, flyer called the Washington Post before the plane had even taken off to report oh, man. it. Did he have to take off his shoes? That's what I want to know. I doubt it, seriously, when you got the Secret Service with you, just go right on. Well, you know, that? I guess huh? he's a busy, busy man. Yeah, that's what uh, he'd like us to think. <laughs> the Pope performing exorcisms. Ooh. Apparently the last was uh, in September for an Italian woman who was uh, possessed by the devil. But the um, whole thing sounds kind of interesting. He's apparently done like three of them. Done three of them in his 23-year uh career. All right. Well, so. that is the news for this half hour. If you have any questions or comments, write us at WNN at ABCnews.com. More news <laughs> coming up from ABC. Final boarding call. All passengers, gate 10. Don't be late. Call 540-WAKE for a reliable wake-up call. Just $2. When you can't be late, you've got to call WAKE. That's 540-WAKE. Call now. The Jeopardy Teen Tournament. Fifteen of the country's brightest teens competing in America's number one quiz show. Jeopardy fans, tune in and cheer for your hometown favorite. A junior from South Plainfield, New Jersey, Margaret Monroe. Margaret knows the game. Margaret. Who is Snoop Dogg? Yes. And she is ready for the challenge. I've been watching Jeopardy since I was about five years old. Watch the Jeopardy Teen Tournament and see how far Margaret Monroe will go. Tonight at 7, right here on ABC7. Save up to 80% buying Factory Direct. The jewelry factory makes most of their jewelry in their state-of-the-art factory, imports their diamonds direct, and guarantees the lowest price. Compare Tiffany's one-carat platinum band for $5,800 with the jewelry factories for $1,500. One-carat hearts are $199, two-carat bracelets $349, one-carat studs $399. The Jewelry Factory has a huge selection and guarantees all the jewelry they make to appraise for at least double. By Factory Direct, the Jewelry Factory in Hackensack. It's here, the Chrysler Great American Getaway. Now choose from our award-winning lineup of cars and minivans. 
and get Chrysler's exclusive seven-year, 100,000-mile powertrain pledge on engines and transmissions, plus big cash allowances, up to $2,500 or 0% financing on select models. GM, Ford, and Toyota don't give you that. Great products, great protection, great value. That's the Chrysler Advantage. In other news, George Taylor was expected to be promoted today at Cryogenics. Mr. Taylor failed to show. Company officials are concerned. He should have called 540-WAKE at just $2 for a reliable wake-up call. When you can't be late, you gotta call WAKE. 540-WAKE. Making peace with the past. A powerful Dr. Phil. Next, Oprah. It is Tuesday morning, and the gruesome discoveries mount at a Georgia crematory. From ABC News, this is World News Now. Investigators have recovered even more decomposing bodies from vaults and sheds at the facility. Hello, from New York, I'm Derek McGinty. And good morning, I'm Liz Cho. Also this half hour, President Bush addresses Asia's oldest legislative body and one of the hottest selling Olympic souvenirs. We begin with a crematory investigation. Georgia's chief medical examiner says he cannot even begin to guess the number of total bodies investigators may find outside the crematory in the small town of Noble. So far, the remains of at least 139 people have been recovered. And as ABC's Steve Osinsami reports, each day brings more grim revelations. As investigators continue to search the property surrounding the tri-state crematorium, they continue to find more bodies, gruesome discoveries. In one case, when investigators opened four vaults, they found them filled with human remains. Police have arrested 28-year-old Brent Marsh, the owner of the crematorium, but they've only charged him with counts of theft by deception, a felony fraud, one to 15 years in jail maximum, not quite what the families had hoped for. The plan on the part of police and prosecutors is to continue identifying the bodies and continue levying charges. Steve Osinsami, ABC News, Lafayette, Georgia. President Bush is visiting Seoul, South Korea today after wrapping up a two-day trip to Tokyo. He met with Japan's emperor and empress and addressed the Japanese parliament. Mr. Bush praised Japan for its role in fighting terrorism. He said civilization and terrorism cannot coexist and vowed that freedom will prevail. We seek a peaceful region where the proliferation of missiles and weapons of mass destruction do not threaten humanity. We'll hear more of what Mr. Bush told the Japanese parliament later this half hour. Now, even before the president left Tokyo, protesters in Seoul took to the streets to rally against his characterization of North Korea as part of, part of an axis of evil. Talks about relations with North Korea are expected to dominate Mr. Bush's talks with South Korean President Kim Dae-jung. Well, testimony resumes today in the murder trial of Andrea Yates, the Houston mother who has admitted to drowning her five children. Defense attorneys say Yates's mind was clouded by psychosis. But ABC's Mike Von Frem reports prosecutors insist she knew exactly what she was doing. Throughout opening arguments, Andrea Yates stared straight ahead, never once glancing at the jury of eight women and four men. She showed no emotion, but clenched her jaw as the prosecutor described how she killed her children one by one. Luke, Paul, and John had been drowned one at a time. She told Sergeant Mel that she needed to be punished, that she was going to hell for what she, was, what she had done. The prosecution is seeking the death penalty because they say the murders of her children were premeditated, based on her confession to police that she planned the drownings for a time when she would be home alone. She told Officer Mel that she did this killing while Russell Yates was away because he would stop her. She also confessed that seven-year-old Noah fought for his life. She told him how she, she called Noah into the bathroom and put him in the water with Mary and drowned him. Her defense attorney says she was a very sick mother who suffered from delusions when she took the life of her children. Postpartum depression with psychotic features is the cruelest and most severe of mental illnesses. 
Russell Yates, her husband, is scheduled to take the stand in two weeks. He is expected to plead with the jury to spare his wife's life. But because he is testifying, the judges ruled that he may not be in the courtroom during any other part of his wife's trial. Mike Vaughn from ABC News, Houston. United Airlines and its mechanics union have reached a tentative contract agreement averting a strike threatened for tomorrow. The deal calls for the same 37 percent pay hike voted down last week, but it now includes improved retirement benefits and speeded up retroactive pay. The mechanics union votes on the agreement in two weeks. The broadcasting journalism pioneer and longtime ABC News correspondent Howard K. Smith has died. He was one of the most recognizable radio voices during World War II and then became one of the most recognizable faces in TV news. Among many memorable moments, Smith moderated the first Kennedy-Nixon debate in 1960. Howard K. Smith was 87 years old. Hmm. I think he also had a Pulitzer and a Peabody, yeah. I think. And Dan yeah. Rather actually said earlier today that, broad, quote, broadcast journalism has lost one of its early greats and that he's a man of intelligence and integrity. And if you can work in this business and leave that kind of mark. Seriously, he just worked on some of the most amazing stories in, in our history, really. And the K actually stood for Kingsbury. There you go. There you go. A little little trivia. factoid exactly. for no and tell. <laughs> Turning to weather this morning, a strong storm system stretches from the Gulf to the Great Lakes. The lower Mississippi Valley could see some tornadoes today. Heavy mountain snow in the far west and wind and rain closer to the coast. Most of the east will have above normal temperatures and just slightly below in the Rockies. Here's the National Temperature Index, local forecasts, and some Dakota babies. Johnson, Johnson, what's your function? Hooking up words and phrases and clauses. Johnson, Johnson, how's that function? I got three favorite cars that get most of my job done. Johnson, Johnson, what's their function? I got Ann Bernor that gets you pretty far. And that's an additive like this and that. But well, that's sort of the opposite, not this. World News Now Weather, brought to you by Bounty. When you got a choice like this or that. And for North, the kids you better find. Introducing Bounty Double Quilted. It does jobs I never thought a paper towel could do. Now the quicker picker-upper is double quilted. Each sheet is quilted once, then quilted again, making it the strongest two-ply paper towel. It even works underwater. And there are twice as many sheets on a roll. More sheets that can do more jobs than you ever thought possible. New Bounty Double Quilted. A typical car insurance agent is on the job during regular business hours. On the other hand, GEICO insurance professionals are on the job 24 hours a day. GEICO, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Oh, uh, I didn't want mail. You don't have to sacrifice service to save money. GEICO, a 15-minute call could save you 15% or more on car insurance. Now you're going along, feeling fine, when it hits you. Diarrhea. Alone, it's bad. But with gas and cramps, too, you've got big trouble. Good thing there's Imodium Advanced Caplets, the only one that combines two medicines to stop diarrhea, cramps, and gas all at once. In no time, you'll feel A-OK -okay again. Imodium Advanced Caplets. Whew, what a relief. Dry skin is a nasty little problem. But extra dry skin, the kind that's tight, itchy, and uncomfortable, now that's a big problem. Fortunately, there's advanced therapy from Lubriderm. It's a really rich and creamy Lubriderm with special nutrients and vitamins. And that puts the problem of extra dry skin out of sight and out of mind. Advanced therapy from Lubriderm. Later, Gator. My mom always said, if you fall down, you gotta get up and dust yourself off. I was becoming this person that I didn't recognize. She's like, you know what? I'm gonna do better for myself drink a Slim Fast for lunch, eat healthy, live better. I lost a lot of weight. Slim Fast has calcium and lots of good stuff in it. 
It's like a treat. My refrigerator, it's always stocked. I definitely got my sparkle back. I'm really proud of my mom. I want to be a role model for my daughter. She's so awesome. Slim Fast. It's your life. Feed it right. Right on target. Now there's a men's hair color made to target only your gray hair. Grecian 5. It's right on target. In five easy minutes, Grecian 5 targets only the gray hair, replaces it with subtle tones like your own natural color. Right on target. It matches the rest of your hair for a subtle, natural look. Grecian 5 targets only the gray. World News Now Sports, brought to you by Grecian 5. All right. <laughs> there were no medals for the United States on the 10th day of the Winter Olympic Games, but the U.S. hockey team moved one step closer to the medal stand. Down 1 0 against Belarus, Brett Hull tied up the games with a quick goal, and after that, the floodgates just opened up. Then it was Brian Leach with a shot. It deflects off a hull, and John McClare shoots and scores the first of his two goals. The U.S. squad overpowered Belarus. Eight to one. The Canadian figure skaters may finally have gotten their gold medals, but the International Figure Skating Union is still facing intense pressure. They are now proposing major changes in the way the sport will be judged in the future. ABC's Carla Wall has the latest from Salt Lake City. People who have been sharply critical of the International Skating Union are now applauding this latest proposal to overhaul the way figure skating is scored and judged. The International Skating Union has been in full crisis mode, hounded by the media for the past week and sharply criticized. ISU President Ottavio Cinquanta is now proposing what he calls radical new changes in the way figure skating is scored and judged. I promise you that this system will never reduce it to a minimum the possibility of block judging. Instead of the current nine judges, Cinquanta is proposing 14. 14 judges will push the button, 40 judges will give their vote, only seven will count. A computer will randomly select which of those seven scores will count. Skating experts believe it will eliminate vote swapping between countries. It takes a little bit of power away from the judges, takes some pressure off the judges, now the judge can do one thing they do well, judge. The future is also looking bright for the four gold medal winners caught at the center of the controversy. Anton Sikorulica and Elena Beretschnaya are booked solid on skating tours, and the Canadians are being inundated with offers of commercial endorsements. There's even talk of a book and a TV movie. They have uh, turned down seven-figure offers already because they didn't feel it was an appropriate activity, and I think they'll be careful to pick and choose. The spotlight will now shift to the individual women figure skaters. Their competition begins tonight. Carla Wohl, ABC News, Salt Lake City. Here's a look at the medal board this morning. Germany leads the way with 24 medals, 8 gold, 10 silver, and 6 bronze. The U.S. medal count stands at 18 with 4 gold, 7 silver, and 7 bronze. Norway has a total of 14 medals, 8 of them gold. And rounding out the top 5, Austria has 13 medals and Russia has 12. So very quickly, is the new system better? Worse? I don't know. What I think it's think? very confusing. But I guess uh, what will happen is that there'll be um, a meeting in Japan in a couple of months, and they'll, they'll decide what's going to happen. So right. that's we'll sports with out. this half hour. And when we come back, the president at the parliament in Tokyo. ABC's World News Now will continue after this from our ABC stations. Special edition Dodge Stratus sedan with automatic trans, power mirrors, a kick and CD sound system, racy aluminum wheels, and five star funnel crash test rating. All for $16,495. Thousands less than Camry or Altima. Just go for it. Grab Dodge's 7100 powertrain pledge. Ford, GM, and Toyota don't have it. It's here the Chrysler Great American Getaway. Now choose from our award winning lineup of cars and minivans and get Chrysler's exclusive seven-year, 100,000-mile powertrain pledge on engines and transmissions, plus big cash allowances, up to $2,500 or 0% financing on select models. GM, Ford, and Toyota don't give you that. Great products, great protection, great value. 
That's the Chrysler Advantage. As stated in Article 1, Section 2 of the Constitution of the United States of America, slaves only counted as three-fifths of a human being. This Black History Month, let's celebrate the fact that America is writing a new chapter that will eventually let everyone see the whole picture. He likes his martini. Shaken, not stirred. Perfect. But how does Bond feel about a little brandy? I'm Brandy. Join me for the best of Bond music countdown during you only.